B lookup, H lookup, index and match. Are you confused yet? Don't worry, I got you covered. Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Eric. In this video, I'll be going over B lookup or vertical lookup, H lookup, horizontal lookup, index and match, and the new X lookup available on Office 365 or on office.com. Let's go check it out. Hi, and welcome to my VLOOKUP tutorial, where I'll be showing you how you can use VLOOKUP in your spreadsheets. To get started, what VLOOKUP is, is you're telling Excel you have a value that you want to look up and return data from a certain column. To get started, we'll need to type in equals, like with all formulas. Next, we'll type, continue typing VLOOKUP and you'll notice the IntelliSense pop up here. You can either double click or hit tab. So go ahead and do that. So the first argument here in bold is asking for a lookup value. So what this means is you're telling Excel what you're looking up and what you want to return. So in this case, if you wanna type in the words, it'll need to be in quotes like so, or you can do a cell reference, which is my choice. It just refers to the cell and it makes it more dynamic. Next, you want to lock this cell or make it absolute by pressing F4 and the dollar signs will appear. So what this does is when you drag your formulas across, this cell will always stay on this cell. Otherwise, if you don't have it locked, it'll always move along. So next, we'll move along and hit comma. The next argument is asking for a table array. And so what this means is your entire data source or your range of data. So we'll just go ahead and highlight that and we'll lock it or make it absolute by pressing F4. Now that you have your data source selected, we'll hit, go ahead and hit comma and it's asking for a column index number. So what this means is we're telling Excel which column we're going to return. So in this case, we're looking for games played, which is GP. And on this column is column B. And we'll go by column numbers. So column A is one, column B is two, and so forth. So we'll go ahead and type in two, and then we'll hit comma. Next argument is asking for a range lookup. So we're always going to want an exact match. So we're going to type in zero. And then we'll close off our brackets and hit enter. So you notice that it says NA. It's because we have a cell reference that doesn't have any data. So we'll go ahead and type in Boston. And we'll see Boston here has 70 games played. And we look on this chart, that is correct, 70 games played. Now, if we want to change this to Vegas, we'll notice it's 71 games played. We'll look on here, Vegas has 71 games played, and that is correct. We'll go ahead and check one more. Let's check Toronto and they have 70 games played. Toronto has 70 games played. That is correct. Now go ahead and drag this formula across. And you'll notice that it says 70 all across. The reason is we need to change our column index reference. So we'll change this to three, go on to the next one, do the same thing, change that to four, change that to five, and the last one is six. So now when we look at this, we have 36 wins for Toronto. So go ahead and look at here, 36 wins for Toronto. Next we'll have 25 losses, 25 losses, and overtime nine, overtime nine here. And then points, we have 81 points, and that is correct. Hi, and welcome to my H lookup tutorial. H lookup stands for horizontal lookup. And like V lookup, where it has a vertical data source, we have a horizontal data source. And it pretty much works exactly the same way as VLOOKUP. So we'll go ahead and start by typing equals and then H lookup, and you'll notice the IntelliSense pop up. Go ahead and double click or hit tab on your keyboard. So it's asking for a lookup value. Again, we can either hard code it in or use a cell reference. Cell reference is my choice. So go ahead and lock that cell, and then we'll hit comma. The next argument is your table array. 
So we'll go ahead and select the whole range here. And we'll go ahead and lock the cell again and hit comma. Now it's asking for a row index number instead of a column index number. And so in this case, we're going to select row two. So hit two because we're looking for games played. All right, hit comma, and we're looking for an exact match again. So hit zero, and then close off your bracket, and then hit enter. Now again, there's NA because we have no cell reference. So we'll go ahead and type in Colorado. And they have 70 games played. 70 games played for Colorado. Now go ahead and drag this formula across. And again, we need to update the row index number. So go ahead and hit change that two to a three. The next one will be a four, then a five, and the last one will be six. Oh, that's not gonna change. All right, so let's double check, make sure this is correct. So Colorado would have 42 wins. So Colorado's here, 42 wins, that's correct. Uh, losses, 20 losses. We'll have 20 losses here, that's correct. The next one is eight for overtime, eight overtime here, that's correct. And then 92 points, uh, that's correct. So you see that HLOOKUP is not as popular as VLOOKUP, but it is useful if you have a horizontal table instead of a vertical table. Hi, and welcome to my index and match tutorial, where I'll be going over the importance of index and match and why it's a little bit better than VLOOKUP in some cases. While VLOOKUP is good, it does have its limitation. And one of the limitations of VLOOKUP is that you cannot return a value that's to the left of your lookup value. Now with index and match, this problem does not happen as you can return the data to the left or to the right. So go ahead and take a look at this formula. So go ahead and type in equals, then we'll type in index. You now you can either double click or hit tab. Next is asking for a reference or an array. So what this means is you're telling Excel what you want to return. In this case, it'll be this range of data here. So go ahead and lock it so it doesn't move. Next, we'll type in comma. Next, and then we'll type in match. So the next argument is asking for a lookup value. You can go ahead and click the cell that has your lookup value, or you can type it in to hard code it. To make it more dynamic, to make it more dynamic, I like to use a cell reference. So go ahead and click the cell, and then we'll lock it by pressing F4 so it doesn't move. Next, we'll hit comma. The next argument is asking for a lookup array. So you're going to tell Excel that your lookup value is in what range of data. In this case, it'll be in this range of data. Again, we'll lock the cell. Go ahead and press F4 and then press comma and the match type. We want an exact match, so it's always a zero. Then we're gonna hit comma. Then we're gonna press another comma again to close off our formula. So go ahead and hit enter after, and you'll notice the games played is 70. If we look on here, games played is 70. So go ahead and change this to Winnipeg. And Winnipeg had 71 games played. And we'll go ahead and look in this chart here. Winnipeg, 71. Excellent. So again, we'll go ahead and drag this across. And again, we'll need to update the column reference. You can either change it up here, or you can click and drag the index lookup. All right, after we do that, we can hit tab to go on to the next one. And we'll change this to loss. Go ahead, hit tab, tab one more time on the formula bar, we'll update the index column again to over time, hit tab twice, and then we'll change the last one to points. So now if we double check, Winnipeg has 71 games played, 37 wins, 28 losses, six overtime, and 80 points. That's all correct. So as you can see, Index and match is a little bit more versatile and flexible than VLOOKUP. So if we're able to master this, then you'll have no problem returning your value using index and match. And we'll go ahead with the next tutorial. Hi, 
and welcome to my XLOOKUP tutorial, where I'll be showing you how you can use XLOOKUP. And this is only available on Office 365 or on Office.com. So unlike VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP has the unique feature of looking up for data that's to the left of your lookup value, where VLOOKUP has this limitation. XLOOKUP does not. It combines the simplicity and flexibility of VLOOKUP and index and match. So let's take a look how it's done. So we'll go ahead and change things around. So we'll go ahead and cut this column and we'll place it in the end. Next, we'll go ahead and type in equals X lookup. You can either double click or hit tab. So the first argument it's asking for is a lookup value. So go ahead and select the cell reference and we'll make that absolute by locking it. Next, we'll hit comma. The next argument is asking for is a lookup array. So what this means is the data that contains your lookup value. So go ahead and select that and then hit F4 to lock it. Hit comma. Next is asking for a return array. So we'll go ahead and select, since we're looking for games played, we'll go ahead and select games played. And by default, XLOOKUP will always do an exact match. So we don't have to in indicate that. So we'll hit and it closes bracket and hit enter. And you'll notice it's 70 games played. So go ahead and drag this. And we see that's updated. The reason why is because we did not lock the last return array. We left it unlocked. So when we moved it over, it actually moved with. So you can see that. It provides the correct data for Toronto. We have 36 games won, 25 losses, 9 overtime, and 81 points. So another key benefit of XLOOKUP is that you can return a range of data for your return value or your return array. And we'll go ahead and update this. So instead of A1 to A32, we can actually change this to a1 to E32, because this covers games played, wins, losses, overtime, and points as our data here. So go ahead and hit enter, and you'll notice that it spills into the other cells. This is very handy, and you'll notice that when you click on this and look at the formula, it's grayed out. So you cannot actually update this. The only way to update this is using the original cell that you had your formula in. So as you can see, this is quite handy over VLOOKUP and index and match as it combines both simplicity and the flexibility of both. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Also leave a comment down below on any topics that you'd like to see. Have a great day.